we looked at the life of Moses to learn the consequence of not getting um, wrath under the the control of the Holy Spirit. Now, just like wrath, any one of the works of the flesh, if we do not get them under the control of the Holy Spirit, we really put our spiritual lives at risk. We put our soul at risk. Any one of these uh, works, any one of these traits can really domino effect into the next and cause the total um, knockout of a person's spiritual life. So we really do have to be careful and we have to be vigilant at all times with the help of the Holy Spirit. So we looked at wrath in our last sessions together, which we described and defined as an explosive anger of rage, which flares into violence. We also looked at um, hatred in one of our previous studies, which talks about an intense or hostile act and extreme dislike. These acts are driven by extreme dislikes. So kind of taking both of these traits, um, I want to talk about seditions and heresies. Um, Other translations of the Bible will also use the words divisions or dissensions. Essentially, what the um, definition of these terms are for what we are studying is introducing divisive teachings that are not supported by the word of God or divisions within congregation into selfish groups or cliques, which ultimately destroy unity. So if you would come with me first to Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. I'm going to read this for you from the Amplified Translation of the Bible, and this is what it says. I appeal to you, brethren, to be on your guard concerning those who create dissensions and difficulties and cause divisions in opposition to the doctrine, the teaching which you have been taught. I warn you to turn aside from them to avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites and base desires, and by ingratiating and flattering speech, they beguile the hearts of the unsuspecting and simple-minded people. It's a very um, intense passage here that Paul is pointing out to us. But here you can also see that this is driven by selfish desires. It says that in verse 18, the idea of speaking in opposition to the word or speaking that in a way that causes divisions and dissensions within a group of people, within a congregation, within a family, is something that is driven by their own appetite and base desires. Division is contrary to the word of God. It's contrary to what we have been taught. And God does not want to see division within his people. That's not his desire. He does not want to see that within families. He does not want to see that within churches. He doesn't want to see division. He he told us and he commanded us to live peaceably with one another as much as we can to live peaceably with one another. The Bible here in this passage, it instructs us to mark or to take note and to stay away from those who bring divisive teachings, those who encourage an air of division or an air of um, disunity within that area that you are in. Anyone who brings divisive thoughts or introduces divisive statements or teaching is somebody for us to actively avoid. Even within the family setting in the house, we have to be careful the words that we choose to say about family members and um, the way that we speak about the people who are in our lives. Within friend groups and within your school setting, we have to be careful what we say about our teachers, what we say about other students. We have to be careful when we're at work, what we say about our coworkers, about managers, about administration, things like that. Because we may be contributing to an environment that is toxic and we may be using our tongue for what God did not create it to do, which is to spread love and to show the love of the Father and to show the kindness of Jesus. Even though you can never control what another person says and that's beyond our reach, you can be careful of what you accept and you can be careful about what you contribute towards that conversation. People will always bring divisive thoughts your way. People will always be speaking ill of others but it's up to us as children of God to remember that the person in front of you is someone you can minister to someone you can show kindness to someone you can show the love of the father to 
Remember, the Bible tells us that the tongue has the power of life and death. So as you go into this weekend, I ask you to consider the words that you're going to be speaking. Consider the things that you will be saying, even the things you will be texting or messaging to one another. And let the Holy Spirit start to work in your life today.